One of the hardest things to do as a field biologist is just finding the animals you want to research. Luckily, radio telemetry is a straightforward technique that can be used for loads of different studies. So how do we use it? Let me show you. For this video, we are going to focus on tracking Kina sternin leucostoma, or the white-lipped mud turtle. They offer additional difficulties in tracking because of their semi-aquatic nature, but they also serve as a great model for designing field experiments due to the variety of data you need to collect. So what is radio telemetry? Essentially, telemetry works by utilizing three basic components. The transmitter, which is attached to the animal, sends out radio signals at a very specific frequency. The receiver, which allows you to dial into the frequency sent out by the transmitter, and the antenna, which allows you to grab the transmitter signal from farther distances, as well as home in on the general direction of the transmitter's signal. These three components used in conjunction with each other allows you to track an animal from several kilometers away through auditory beeps. The louder the beep from your receiver, the closer you are to the target animal. And in case you're wondering, multiple studies show that when properly set up, radio telemetry devices do not drastically affect the survivability of the animals over the length of the study. For turtles, we used a non-toxic epoxy that affixes the transmitter directly to the turtle's shell through the duration of our field season, about six months. So how do you go about actually using radio telemetry? Now, because telemetry allows us to track animals from such a great distance, you often have to cast a wide search area when you first start tracking. You do this by utilizing the directional nature of an antenna and the settings on your receiver. Receivers typically have a volume, a frequency, and a gain knob. Volume and frequency are very straightforward, but gain can often be confusing to those new to radio telemetry. For all intents and purposes, gain is how sensitive your receiver is to your selected frequency. Higher gain values allow you to search from much farther away, but also increase the angle of your search radius. Therefore, when you're tracking your target animal, it's best to keep your gain at the lowest value where you can still hear the beeps on your receiver. This reduces the area where your receiver can pick up signals, allowing you to better pinpoint where your target animal is. Now, I would be lying if I said you would never run into problems while using radio telemetry. Bounce back and interference can confuse or mask the location of your transmitter. Additionally, if there are multiple transmitters with similar frequencies, you might pick up the frequency from another transmitter. Fiddling with the frequency on your receiver and pointing your antenna elsewhere, such as behind you, can often help you figure out the problem. Once you've found your target animal, that's when you start taking measurements. For our study, we first took GPS data. We used the decimal format latitude longitude coordinate system, but keep in mind how you're going to analyze your data. Other location formats such as UTM may be better suited for your data set because different analysis softwares require different inputs. Next up is environmental data. Time of day, weather, temperature, and humidity are all very common measurements taken in field studies, but don't forget to also take measurements specific to your location or target species. For mud turtles, we take information on how covered the turtle was by debris, distance to near a shore, water depth and velocity, as well as the slope of the terrain. After we take environmental data, we then take information on the individual turtle. The identity of the turtle is known via scoot notching, wherein you file a small mark on specific scoots of the turtle's shell, behavior such as foraging, burrowing, hiding, feeding, etc., and other parameters such as sex, morphological measurements, and overall condition are also kept. Not all of this data is used in our final analysis, but keeping comprehensive data is a crucial component of proper science. While you may not be studying a particular aspect of your target species at that time, further questions and insights can be gathered from this additional data keeping. Once you're done collecting all of your data, it's important to return the animal exactly as you found them. That means placing it back under the cover in which you found them, 
or if you found them under the water, place them back on the shore facing the water. Don't just throw them back in. After all that, you're finally done. You were able to successfully track and find an animal using radio telemetry, and then you took all the required measurements needed for your study. From there, you can move on to finding your next animal, or head back to the station and enjoy some much needed rest. Hi there, thanks for watching. This has been a pet project of mine that I've wanted to do for a while. And if there are any topics relating to ecology, conservation biology, uh, herpetology, animal world, whatever, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me a message and I'd be happy to see if I can put something together. Uh, but if not, have a great day.